And it looks like I'm live. I'm uh, Fat Stevens, and I'm uh, doing a presentation tomorrow at uh, Glocal. I'm, I'm using a, the reason I'm looking at side is I've got this other monitor over here. And monitoring my presentation on this other device. And apart from that, I'm just kind of practicing it. So this one is uh, it's an hour-long presentation. It's just turned 7 o'clock here in the evening. I'm in Penang, Malaysia. I don't think I'm going to be very pressed for time on this, but uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to show people how to use tags, especially tags at the GlobeCal conference. Uh, because I think they're underused. And this is being given as a workshop on December 17th at the uh, GlobeCal annual conference. Um, not sure if we had it last year in 2020, but 2021, that's this year, is a virtual conference. Okay, so uh, it's called Tag Games, How to Use Tags in Professional and Language Development. Okay, so... It's a workshop, and there is one task to perform, or what I like to call missions. Actually, Shelley Terrell got me calling these things missions some time ago. So to engage in the workshop, you have to pull up instructions at the slideshow. You can get this very slideshow right here. It's at uh, a bit.ly link, and the, the mnemonic for it after the HTTPS colon slash slash bit dot ly is GlowCal 2021 Vance. There's also a GlowCal Vance 2021, and that's the pros write-up. So, uh, but for the slide presentation, it has the instructions that you're going to need, and you can you can bring that up, and I'll be also displaying reminders of what the instructions are and uh, reminders of this QR code. But you can get the slides from the QR code as well. After the presentation, I understand all the presentations are being recorded. I think I'm recording this one now. I've done it myself. And um, so uh, I'll be posting recordings from the conference at learningtogether.net. So here is what I need for everyone to do. This is your mission, the one thing you need to do in this workshop, and that is to uh, bring up your Twitter account, or Facebook, or Instagram. Either of those will do. Now, uh, you could take a picture of where you are. If, you have, if, you, if you're using a device like a cell phone, you can take a picture. It's always fun to take a picture. You can see where people are. So what I'm thinking, so you're going to post this to, uh, to your Twitter account, or Instagram, or Facebook. And we're going to then search for your post according to the tag, which is number four here, GlowCal 2021. So that's essential. Your post has to have that tag in it, the hashtag GLOCALL2021. So to get that post up there, uh, you can be doing this while I'm telling you about it. Maybe you already know what to do. Just take a picture of your surroundings, show us what you're doing, where you are. Post anything you want. Actually, you could post a picture to your presentation at this conference, or, or not even a picture. You could post a, a link to it or something like that. It's any information relevant to the conference. And uh, so you create a post, a tweet, or a Facebook post, or an Instagram post. Include a picture is always nice. You know, those pictures grab people. All text uh, leaves people wishing you had a picture. And then submit it. So that's your that's your uh, your task, and and the task is there's a when you go to the slideshow, you're going to see that all the uh, all the links are um, hyperlinked, and so all those hyperlinks will work when you bring this slideshow up in your screen. So you can follow the slideshow if you like. If you shoot the QR code, it'll bring up this slideshow. It'll have working hyperlinks. So um, how did I get? There we go. There we go. Okay, next slide. Okay, so what I'll, what I'll do during my presentation, there's nobody really doing this right now, but I hope during my presentation people will be um, people will be 
tweeting and things like that. And so what I'm doing right now is to test to see what happens when I click on a link like this. It brings up uh, the it brings up that status. This is the tweet that I posted here. So um, I, I posted this yesterday. I'm setting up here in Penang and practicing a big blue button for my local workshop. There's the tag and empowering uh, participants to share the commentary across parallel sessions and back channel, et cetera. So, and I, I put a link to the placeholder for my presentation there. So there's more information there if you want to see it. So anyway, this is a tweet I posted yesterday and just took a picture of where I happen to be right now, where I was yesterday. I'm still there today, actually. And um, so when you go there, let's see. Whoa, I got back to my Twitter page. Go back to the slides here. All right. So uh, there's a search on Twitter. If we go to Twitter, you can see that there's a search. Here's search Twitter. So if I search Twitter, maybe it's better to do this live. So let's see where this uh, this thing ended up. So if I if I search for Glocal 2021, there's my tweet. See, so anybody can use this link to search Twitter. Now this link. Uh, ends in pipe head underscore click. And that's because all the Twitter searches like this default to the top posts. So it could be that mine is the only top post, but we can also use the latest tag. All the links that I've got in my slideshow are to the latest. So what that does is it gives you um, tags in um, when you're when people here when I do this in my workshop, I hope by now I'll find more tags here above mine. So uh, that that should work. Uh, that's what the workshop is about. So what we're going to do in the workshop is we're going to have people posting and encourage people also to post throughout the conference. Whatever you you find at the conference, you could post about it. So that's the the link that I just pulled up. That one right there. Uh, that's the link to the latest posts, and which you can follow all through the conference if you like. Now, you can also find these on Facebook as well. And the link for the uh, Facebook hashtag is 2021. Now, it's being populated already. So as of uh, today, or uh, let's see. Okay. As of today, something popped up on my screen, and I but it wasn't on my presentation. It was a Facebook message. Okay, so uh, Andy Tri Nguyen with Kenny Nguyen uh, is, has been posting. He's got a post to his presentation, I suppose. This must be his, his post. And he's posted it um, on, on Facebook under this tag. So if you type GlowCal2021 into Facebook, and you can see all the tags that people have put up. Let me make these a little bit bigger for you. Okay, I think that's a little easier to see. All right, so there's Andy's tag. And then yesterday I posted this. Or actually, what have I got the top? Have I got the top tags? Uh, doesn't say. Oh, because it's Facebook. Okay, yeah. All right, so Facebook, uh, I posted that some time ago. I posted that back in July. Um, I posted this nine hours ago. Again, I it pulled up here because it's uh, tagged Glocal. No, it's, it's, doesn't, it is tagged. There it is, tagged right there. They use the hashtag. So all the hashtags will aggregate. When hashtags accumulate in a spot, we call that aggregation. So they're aggregating to, uh, to this place under this link, which is what you get when you search on uh, hashtag Glocal2021. So yesterday I posted uh, the start of the Glocal, and I posted it under that link, and I took a picture of uh, Deborah presenting. I took a picture of the, uh, did a screen capture of the screen I saw as we started our uh, GlowCal yesterday, and a lot of people liked it. Okay, there's a list of all the people who like it right there. Whoops, I could like it too. Okay, so uh, let's see, what else is there? Uh, I posted it to Learning Together. I posted, oh, Ali. Bostanji, who is, uh, uh, did a dissertation on webheads, which is something that I started some time ago. Um, Ali 
posted that as well to the Webheads group. And I thought we had another one here. I thought we had one, another one from uh, uh, Andy Trinuyan, Andy Trinuyan. In any event, uh, that's what we see here right now. Okay, Instagram, you can also uh, find, you, if you post something on Instagram, I actually haven't done this yet, but anyway, uh, you can, on Instagram, use this link to explore Instagram. And you can, oh, this is uh, Andy uh, Trinuyan posted his, he took a picture on Instagram, or he posted that through Instagram, and he's got that, uh, he's ready for this amazing event. So he's telling us that uh, today, I believe, or tomorrow, today is the 16th. Um, today, I uh, can't really bring that in very, very big, but anyway, he's, he, as it looks like it's at 15, at 3.30, oh, on the 18th, so it's, it's the last day of the conference. Okay, so, but the interesting thing about um, Instagram is that people have been, there's another tag that people have been using, and this tag is locale. 2021, and then Malaysia. So there's more than one tag here. So I think the conference posted this. I guess that's somebody using the logo uh, of the conference is posting to a different tag from the one I'm using. This is perfectly normal. This is what happens with tags. So uh, it's... I try to encourage conference uh, organizers of conferences that I am involved in to try to establish a tag early and make it very public so that everybody knows about it. Um, we'll we'll look at uh, let's see. Uh, let me let me just this, this is a screenshot I can bring up that shows you what you need to do in case you've forgotten. I'm using control. There we go. Okay, so you need to be posting something like what I just posted, taking a picture of where you are. Make sure you use the post.glocal.2021 and submit your post. We'll go and have a look at those later and see what else is turned up there. Meanwhile, back at my presentation, let's see what's going on here. We're talking about folksonomies. Tagging is a folksonomy. And it's different from taxonomies. So taxonomies are what many of us have learned to, how many of us learn to organize things. We create taxonomies. There's um, Linnaeus's taxonomies. Um, Dewey, 100 years ago, maybe even more than that, created the Dewey Decimal System, which is popular use in all libraries. Uh, he, his decimal system divided human knowledge into groups of 10. I suppose there were, uh, I can't remember, 100 or 1,000 groups of 10 because he gave everyone, everything had a, so everything got categorized in these packets of 10. And so if I go around here, I can compare. A folksonomy is done through metadata. So what we do is when we have, we have content on the web and we tag it, then we're associating metadata with that item. And what that means is that if we put it someplace where tags can be read, we can pull up all the items using that tag. So if I take these things in clockwork, if I go clockwork around here, let's talk about the difference between a taxonomy. A taxonomy is top-down. That means that someone decides it in advance, and we follow that taxonomy. A folksonomy is bottom up. People, uh, people decide what they're going to tag things. Okay, they can do it in some structured way, or they could just do it whatever comes to them. It turns out this works really well because even if you get more than one tag, like Glocal uh, 2021 and Glocal 2021 Malaysia, uh, and even if you had more, like Glocal 21, so. If you had more of them, eventually you might people might begin to find them, and they'll they'll sort of settle on one. Okay, so anyway, 
uh, taxonomies are client server, which means that there's a, I wonder if that's server client, anyway. Okay, client server means that you've got a server and it feeds information to the client. Um, Folksonomies are peer-to-peer. -peer. They work peer-to-peer. -peer. This is another kind of networking. Okay. Um, taxonomies are structured, and uh, they're structured information dissemination networks. Folksonomies are ad hoc information discrimination distribution networks. Now, folksonomies are created are, are creative. Comprehensible, comprehensive and adaptable. By comprehensive, it means that people will think of tags that the structured person didn't think about. The person who made the uh, inflexible system isn't the tags, the new things that come along aren't necessarily going to fit into those categories. So, but with tagging, you can always create new categories and always find things. Now, these last two are a little bit getting off the edge here, these are what people are most uncomfortable with, but folksonomies are unpredictable. You can't really tell unless someone tells you what we're going to use. So we're going to use Glocal 21 or Glocal 21 Malaysia, you know, and you might find that your ability to share and collaborate through tagging is diluted if people are using different tags until they find each other. Uh, that it may not happen in a three-day conference. Maybe right now we're in the, and my presentation is in the second day of the conference. So taxonomies, however, are predictable. If you go to a library, you can, there's a card catalog there and you can find books on the shelves. Um, and if a book is not in its right place, you've lost it forever. That's the nice thing about the folksonomy is if those books actually had some tag that we could reach, you could find the book over there, which is not in its place. Uh, folksonomies are sloppy. They're just all over the place. They're just whatever people come up with. Taxonomies are, are precise. Okay, I gave a presentation in Oman last year recently, and you can see that presentation there if you want to learn more about this. Okay, so anyway, sloppiness and unpredictability in folksonomies. Let's, let's have a look. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the Glocal 2019 threads went on Twitter in Glocal 2019. But I thought a, a good example of how people find tags is Worldcal 2018. Um, so we're going to go click on that link. Some people were using Worldcal 5. People like to find short tags. They, they appreciate short tags because they um, the short tags... Um, uh, save characters in your tweet. It's not so much an issue right now. Let me see if I can scroll down all the way down here. No, let's see. I think I, I've got a Glocal 2019. Let me, let me just pop over here. Okay, so um, yeah, we go here. we're near the bottom on this one. So people are starting to congregate here in Glocal. Um, there we go. About to start. Oh, they're about to start their presentation. Well, anyway, you can see that there are a lot of people. Um, uh, here's an example of someone who used both tags, WorldCal and WorldCal 5. So he was a little undecided about which one to use. Okay, there we go. Made that a little bit larger. And uh, we've got a lot of taggers, a lot of tweeters here. There's another tweeter. And she said, Glocal 2018, she used that tag. Um, this is somebody who was at my presentation who uh, also posted a picture of it. So this is very nice. Um, and probably about the same time, uh, and Alexandra Samoz was in a, another presentation. So we're getting to, uh, we're getting to see, and, and also Worldcal was another tag she used. So she used a, a number of tags. So we're getting to see that something was happening on November 17th, all the different things that were going on. So you might be in one presentation, and people are uh, 
posting what else is going on in the conference. And, and people who are not in all the presentations, they might get the, here we go. So she, she's posting pictures of what's going on there. This is all her presentations, all her tweets. Okay. So um, here's a tweet of mine. I guess at this time on the same date, I've probably moved on to uh, uh, all challenges from Bangladesh. That, that was in Concepcion at the university. There are huge distances between presentations. Um, so it was um, really hard to get from one place to another. Here's one I like because um, Mark Pegwin is here. He came to my presentation and, uh, and someone tweeted. I tweeted it. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is all the people that came to my presentation. So I really appreciate this picture. And I appreciate Mark for coming to it. Of all the things he could have done. Or maybe he was just down in that area. That was convenient. So um, anyway, so this is the next one I went to, I guess. Uh, and so we can see there that we have uh, lots of different people tweeting on these different uh, presentations. This one Dor for Doris Malero's presentation. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about writing matrix in a moment because writing matrix was a project that Doris participated in, which relied on tagging. So uh, webheads in action was uh, kind of the umbrella we used to mount this project. So you'll hear more about that in a little bit. Okay. Um, so then there's Tom Robb, who chaired the uh, symposium that Doris presented at. They had invited a lot of people to come on a grant, and these people had to give a presentation about what they were doing, and Doris got there on that grant. Okay, let's have a look at um, what happens in WorldCal 5. And if I click on that link, it will take me to WorldCal 5, and I've got one over here, which is which I'd kind of queued. So uh, these are all WorldCal 5, and you can see that me, I'm covering both bases, and a lot of people are. Uh, here I say that Twitter is uniquely suited to aggregating on conferences. We can all replay pictures and content by searching on. So you can see how you can replay the conferences. It's pretty much a conference replay. You can be in a presentation, but see tweets on that presentation appear. This is an interesting thing. If you're in a, in a presentation, you can see other people tweeting. It'll have a picture associated with it. So someone might be in the presentation, and this tweet appears in the same presentation, and the People, we start looking around. Who's who's who's? Oh, there's the, there's this picture matches with that that person. So then all of a sudden you've made a friend. You've got a you've got somebody something in common. So you become friends and make a new colleague. And um, okay, and, and uh, Gary Madaram uh, discovered that there was also a World Cal 18 and a World Cal. 20. 2018 and World Cup 5. So you can see how the folksonomies are working there. That's actually one thing I wanted to show you what, how this pulls conference people together during the conference. It makes a great back channel and it stimulates a lot of conversation. And um, I wanted to also show how it works at uh, in Da Nang. This is what we're, when we came to Da Nang two years ago, I'm not going to click there because I think I've got my Da Nang presentation uh, queued. If I do or not. Okay, so no, I guess I've got it over here. So um, let's see. I think if I pull this all the way down, that's all the way at the top. And that's all the way down. And yes, yes this one scrolls quite nicely because I've already queued it. So on the 20th, people start arriving. This guy's presenting on. Meraza was presenting on December 1st. Kim Lee showed up and tweeted he was there. Ido Forsyth, who did a lot of tweeting at the Global Conference, was there. I took a picture of a walk I made, which was the night before Global And um, so we start talking about here's, here's Ido. Uh, it's the conference has begun. He's, you can sort of follow what's going on here. There's some of the first presentations, Cynthia White uh, presenting at, uh, in plenary. Um, there's me and Tom Robb and Karen Price and Cynthia White. 
and uh, you can see that, well, there are not a lot of tweeters. That's me tweet. That's Edo. Sorry, Edo is tweeting Karen Price's uh, presentation. And let's see. There's Eric Hagley, um, 2019. And here we're about to start a cultural show. Uh, and I think uh, I, I tweeted here a, uh, a video of a rehearsal I did and presented at this online conference of the presentation I was doing at this conference. If you could have that. Advertisements from Twitter. Thank you very much, Twitter. Uh, Edo at the dance. Um, okay, so anyway, you get the idea. A lot of people tweeting. And what I wanted to do, though, was come up to the top. So if I zoom way back up to the top here. At the last tweets we did. Now, um, first of all, somebody was showing us Nearpod and putting, uh, there were questions in the, you put your questions in Nearpod. It's kind of like, um, it's used like, what is that? The Padlet, you know, Padlet. Uh, so, so I was, I think I posted something here uh, or posted a question. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, okay, so here are questions in the Nearpod, in the Nearpod audience. And um, here, yes, I posted this. Relatively few attendees are posting to the Twitter tag, GlowCal2019. What do you think would be a more appropriate or current tab for back channel conversation at 2020, question mark? And uh, I posted that. Uh, followed that up with maybe Nearpod, so suggesting maybe for 2020 we could use Nearpod. If you go to this tag, you'll find that it's the only post anybody made for 2020. Uh, so here I'm thanking the organizers. Um, it was announced, this is important, okay? It was announced at the conference that the conference would be streamed to YouTube. Now, I didn't know where the YouTube came out. So is there a channel where we can see the videos? I asked that question, and um, along comes Mr. Min, English. He posted this, but then he posted an answer to my question. Um, so he posted, uh, he, he replied to my post, and uh, and it came up in Twitter. And he says, uh, here's links on the school's Facebook page. They're not public, though. He didn't warn me. I don't know what that means. If you put them on Twitter, they're public. But let's have a look here. This is the opening ceremony from, um, this is actually his tweet. This is the opening ceremony. And when I click on the tweet, it pulled up this uh, status. If you click on the, um, if you click on the date, you're going to get the tweet coming up in big layers like this. So let's have a look at what the opening ceremony looked like in YouTube. I don't know if it's important. Oh, this is uh, this is this is the opening plenary. One of the plenaries, yes. Uh -huh. So I'm going to play it until he himself comes. Let me see. I'm at one fifteen. Okay. Oh, yes. He's talking about digital games, obviously. Let me just pop around in here. Let's see. Here, here he is giving his presentation at the conference. I'm, I don't remember exactly who this is. But. So this is what uh, the stage looked like, or what the, what the stream looked like, sorry. He's on the stage presenting, and then it shows his, uh, his slides in another window. So let's see what else there is here. I'm going to back up in this presentation here. Let's see if I back up to, uh, oh, there's, a, there's everybody at the conference. They're just all coming up on stage, being introduced. Okay, there's Eric and towering over Karen and Su Ming and uh, Claire Siskin. And, uh, and that's Cynthia White. And I'm not really sure who the other people are. But anyway, so you can see this is a nice treasure here. And then, of course, the uh, the 
cultural show was also very nice. Okay, and I'm going to go right back to the beginning as uh, the audiences are starting up. So the other videos are similar to this. Uh, they all, this one is a couple of hours long. Um, I like that perspective of the audience. So in any event, you know, this, this is a treasure here on, uh, on Twitter. Um, these other ones start a little bit slow, but um, oh, this is... Uh, um, Karen's presentation, Artificial Intelligence. I don't know if we can, let's see what we can bring up here. We can actually go way into it. There's a little technical glitch at the beginning. Let's see if we can catch Karen here. Not quite yet, I don't think. Okay. No, this is all paneled. Here we go. Is that, will we get Karen here? Okay, when I do this, I think so. You know, help, this is there. Uh, I think when I do this again, I'm going to cue her presentation. This looks like it. Mike. Yep, yeah, there she is. Karen always tells us about the latest technology tools. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm looking at Karen's um, presentation. Here we go. I pull it up here. We can see the. Oh, she's showing us videos. There's her voice. Just checking that this is coming out on the recording. You can, it, it just blew my mind since mid -May. This is out. You can take your camera and your phone. And you don't have to download an app. You're just in Google Lens. And you point it at a book. It will give you reviews, how much it costs. It will even send you to Amazon. It will, you know, there's just objects will take you places. It recognizes objects and it will act on them. Most plants you can identify. If I point my camera at that arrangement, it will name the different flowers in that arrangement. It will, it's good with uh, buildings for architecture tours. It will give you, uh, it's just astonishing. Those little dots I can't stop easy. listening to Karen. Okay, anyway, this is at uh, 47 minutes into her presentation, and you can go back and review this yourself if you want, just by going to... Um, to Mr. Min's tweet. Uh, um, let's see, where is that tweet? That's 2019. 2019 is right there. And uh, this is this was what I was listening to. So I just clicked on Mr. Min's page, and then you can pull up the different tweets. I was listening to session four. Okay, so anyway, um, that's what we did. That's, that's what we did with, uh, with um, in Da Nang. And we were pretty consistent on the tag back then, and it had a lot of people, so there was a lot of sharing and collaboration. Okay, so moving on, um, in that uh, presentation where I was showing you the taxonomies and folksonomies, I was asked at the end of it, how tags could be used practically in the classroom. And I think I said something like, it depends on the inventiveness of the teacher who sees an opportunity for collecting student feedback or collecting data from students and bringing that data together in one place uh, in the context of a particular learning situation. So teachers really have to figure out how to use tags. but. Um, earlier that year, 
uh, no, this was in 2021, early in 2020, before we all went into lockdown, I gave a workshop in Thailand. And uh, let me just go to that workshop because uh, this is, I, I left everything that I did. It, it wasn't just a workshop. It was two weeks of workshops. And let me just make this bigger so you can see it. So um, it had a, an E component. Everything I produced for it, I put online. Um, now, at the workshops themselves, um, I gave the workshops, the content of the workshops is over here on the left. The workshops themselves were done in different places. So I went around to work to the different uh, universities in Thailand, and I gave Taylor requested, you could say, bespoke workshops. So they took topic one or topic two or whatever. And what I did at all of them, I'm going to go to this page right here, archived aggregations from all the workshops. So what I did was I aggregated uh, student work at the workshops. I gave them all tasks, something uh, similar to this one. Let me just go back where I can find. So I gave, they, they all were asked to do something like this. That is, bring up your Twitter account, Facebook, Instagram. My wife was there. I called her my beautiful assistant. And she was taking pictures in Facebook and posting them. So we were seeding, uh, had people in the audience seeding these uh, searches. So when we searched on the content on the tags, they all came up for the people in that workshop. How did they come up for the people in that workshop? Well, for each tag, for each workshop, I gave a different tag. So, for example, at uh, Trinikarinwirat University, it was called SWUIC. So I didn't highlight very well, but anyway, that... Let's see if I can make this bigger. Okay, I think it's going to be a little bit bigger. Okay, so the different tags, you can see January 29th, SWUIC, January 28th, CRRU, and that's at Chiang Rai University. Um, so, let's see, what if we go to Chiang Rai? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. These are... Um, I made it, I'm showing the screencast of Matic, so I made a video of me telling them what to do. Uh, you had them use Etherpad, uh, Jing, screencast o -Matic. Uh, I think that's the, what you're looking, no, that's, up to, that's been uploaded to YouTube. Okay, Google Forms, and Twitter. So let's see, let's look at the live tweets. So this is what, from CRRU on January 28th, let's see what they came up with. Uh, the latest tweets. Okay, such a fantastic workshop. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. So anyway, uh, oh, that's uh, that looks like an ad from Twitter. May May showed us. Oh, I had them uh, when I asked them to use Etherpad. I asked them to tag where their Etherpads were. So this is oh, this is how you can use them with students. So you can give them an assignment in another medium and have them aggregate all the places they open up, like this one right here. Let's see if we just open that one. Uh, this is uh, Pawina's Etherpad, uh, which is a space you can open. Um, not sure what she has there. What I put in her Etherpad? How do I learn English? Okay, so I gave them instructions and they did these things. So she put, she made her work accessible to everybody and it's still there. And she made it accessible through uh, through this tag. So I posted that screencast recording there. Um, okay, so these guys did an Etherpad. Okay, so um, let's see what else. Oh, somebody else reacted. Okay, this is all about Etherpad. Uh, these are the people in the workshop. And uh, this is Bobby's post picture of me, which he used this tag to put it on Twitter. So I think that was at the beginning of the workshop to try to get people to see how it worked. Okay, so um, I've lost track of the page, I think, because there we go. So if we go back to this one on Facebook. Let's see if anybody put anything 
with that tag in Facebook. Okay, well, nothing there that day in Facebook. Okay, so uh, let's go to Instagram. People often post in Instagram. Okay, there's someone who posted that picture of them at the at this place in Instagram. So you can see there's there's scope for students to do things and share information. They could be out in different parts of the campus and they could be touching base through their Twitter tags. You could track them on what they're doing that way. Okay. So here's our, our Padlet for that, uh, that time. All right, so if I go back, uh, that's just an example of what uh, people were doing and how you can use tags, um, let's see, tags in the classroom, okay? Um, so you can see all the aggravations. If you want to explore that further, you can find all those aggravations here, which is, I believe, that that page, yes, uh, the archives, 2020. Okay, so the really interesting project that we did that Doris Molero referred to in 2007, we did something we called Writing Matrix. It was a project where we were using something called Technorati at the time. Technorati was a blog troller. The idea of Technorati was that you could put in tags in Technorati and it would find all the blog posts that had that tag in it. So I have to explain how you find a good tag. First of all, a tag like writing matrix. Um, what we, how we determined that tag is we put it in all these searches and we came up with what, do you think? We came up with nothing. There were no, um, no hits on writing metrics. Bingo, exactly what we want. We want a tag that no one else is using. For example, I do something called Webheads in Action. If you use the tag Webheads, you'll get Spider-Man stuff. So, you know, there's, you have to be careful with your tags. You want to find a tag that no one else is using. The writing matrix was right on the money. So writing matrix was a tag that no one was using. Now, we were able to put that into Technorati, and it was a, able to get on the Internet and find uh, students' blogs where they had just added writing matrix as a category or a tag. Uh, and it worked. We had teachers in Venezuela, Slovenia, Argentina, uh, Brazil. Um, well, we can see where the teachers came from. This is a website. We created actually a website in uh, Wikispaces. When they killed Wikispaces, we got back together and rebuilt this website. So <clears throat> Doris is in Venezuela. Nelda was in Ar and Rita were in Argentina. Sasha was in Slovenia. And then as we got going, these people had their students write blog posts, tag them. Students in other countries found the tags, the tagged posts, and they started interacting on each other's blog posts. It worked like a charm. And then other teachers found out about it, especially people in Brazil, thanks to Carla Arena and, um, and her group of teachers. And they tried it, and they, they said it worked. They reported back it worked. Now, unfortunately, there's not a lot of writing matrix material around because we weren't using Twitter or any of those modern things. And, and Technorati has since become um, enterprise. So Technorati now, um, they don't find, they're, they're trying to weed out tags that no one is using. They're not registering tags that you invent for your classroom. You know, CRRU isn't going to work with Technorati. They're looking for tags that people are actually, that, that are, are trending. So Technorati is no longer available to us, but we need a tool like that. We made this really nice video. Let me just play it for you. It starts off with, um, it's, a, it's only a few minutes long. Uh, it starts off with uh, one of uh, Rita's students. And he's so cool. He says, want to make friends? Tagging, man. So here it is tells you a little bit about how writing matrix went. This was, by the way, our presentation at the K-12 
online conference in 2007, uh, you were supposed to submit a virtual presentation. You're supposed to make a, a video of what you were doing. No, no synchronous presentations. People interacted. Oh, they did have some synchronous events where people came together and talked. But um, your your presentation was this. So let me just play this for you. This takes five minutes. Looking for our key friends. This is showing where some of the people were who were following um, our presentations. Okay, so let's start. Well, welcome. This is uh, um, ESL blogging in Venezuela. And we're going to be describing how we are participating in the Writing Matrix project. Where some of the people are. Hi, everybody. We are the These are some of Slovenia's uh, contributions, I believe. There's Sasha, Sasha Sirk. Never met her in person. That was me in uh, UAE at the time. Uh, this is Matt Stevens in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I'm coordinating the Writing Matrix project. And our four teachers are redesigns there, such as Sir, Melba Quintana, and Doris Valero, who've been in the project from its outset back in the summer of 2007. And right now, Rita is going to tell us a little bit about her participation in a private institution where I teach English as a foreign language. And I have found it a little bit difficult at the very beginning to motivate my students to post in the class blog I opened up for them. But then, uh, with a the passing of time, uh, they took to it and they started enjoying participating uh, realizing that they were going global and that through uh, blogging they could reach many people in the cyberspace. These are some of the teachers. Barbara Dew, and that was Nelba Quintana and Rita Zines there. This is where Nova works. Hello, my name is Nova Tintana. Today is the 22nd of September 2007. We are here at the School of Languages because it is the 14th anniversary. Some teachers are speaking about their uh, research work and project. I'm going to speak about writing matrix projects. I'm very happy because the Today, I meet uh, Matia for the first time face to face. Matia is one of the participants of WebMetrix uh, project. Hello, Matia. Hello. My name is Matias. I'm a member of the uh, Writing Matrix project. And I meet Quintana, I met Quintana in, in a list in Jabu. That's fine. So when she, when people post that, there's a lot of writing around it. So this, people are students meeting each other. And, uh, well, uh, so I experimentally opened the class block a few weeks before ending our course, and I invited uh, my students to collaborate on it, just to show them how it works, how simple it is to use it, and how far it can reach. Um, my uh, friends from Webhead Connection knew about this experiment and they dropped by to say hi. 
promote various cases and they can actually surprise my students and me. Um, and uh, students think that uh, there is a real audience uh, everywhere out there um, and that it is uh, very easy to get connected. Okay, well, that's a fun little uh, thing that we did. So writing matrix was like how to make friends, how students can make friends. Okay, so I think I want to make sure in my presentation that I go and have a look at how those feeds are filling up, and I think we would be doing that right now. Uh, we have about five or ten minutes left in this one. And uh, this would be, oops, sorry about that. Um, how do I get to the next? There we go. But for this recording, this is it. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the workshop. And um, if you find it valuable, we know that you found it valuable if we start looking into our feeds for GloCal 2019 and we see your posts. So as a reminder, for these slides, you visit uh, bit.ly slash GloCal 2021 advance, or there's a QR code there. The report, the recording will be at learningtogether.net, and there's a prose write-up that you can get there. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, since I'm the only one in this presentation right now, apart from my partner, Vance, who is just over here. I'm going to say hi. Let's see, just to see how things are working here. Okay, so Vance says hi. I so yes, this will go in the, uh, and I can say hi back. And uh, so what I'm doing is I'm checking out just how this is all going to work. Okay, and that's it. So I'll be able to follow the chat. Uh, I'll be able to monitor it over here. Uh, so this is all working very well. Okay, so this is Vance Stevens. Uh, I'm doing this on the 16th of December. 2021. It's for the GloCal 2021 conference, and I'm in Penang, Malaysia. The conference happens to be in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and I think actually, remarkably, I could actually go there for a, a live conference. This one is entirely online, set up that way for good reason. Okay, well, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the presentation, and uh, I will end it. Bye-bye.